nonsense. Bunch of spam, scam, false advertising and maybe one or two real suggestions hidden in the mess. I guess the only positive result is that they don't rank Gmail as neither private nor secure email provider. Cause, <laughs> cause that would be just gross. When you use Gmail, Yahoo or Hotmail, your messages are sent as postcards visible for everyone to catch, read and store as they make their way transferring the internet. However, your email messages should be treated as letters in envelopes where only senders and receivers know about their content. Isn't every email secure? No. Encryption forbids the business model for the infamous tech monopolies like Google or Microsoft. If they encrypted your mailbox, they couldn't read your Gmail or Hotmail messages and send them to the advertisers for targeted manipulation. Only ethical email providers that don't require you to pay with your private data for using their services also give you secure email accounts. I want to make this easy to follow guides to private email providers so that you, dear internet citizen, have several options of private, secure and encrypted email accounts to choose from. You know, just like the free market should actually be without monopoly abuses. Even though Google, Yahoo and Microsoft don't want you to know it, there are plenty of Gmail, Yahoo and Hotmail alternatives that keep your messages private and secure from prying eyes of advertisers and governments. Email communication is personal and should be completely private. When Gmail takes your private email messages to make profit off of you, they're exposing your data to hackers, cyber criminals, identity thieves and governments around the world you can't trust. When your email provider gets hacked, like Yahoo did a couple of years ago revealing data of its billion users, you should know about it immediately and not after your login credentials have been on sale on the darknet for 3 years. You should not be required to have a blind faith in your provider, but the code of the service you use should be available to public to audit it for any potential backdoors, bugs and security issues. Even if you don't have the technical knowledge to participate in the audit, you can at least rely on a community consensus rather than just a single centralized company. Your private data should be protected. And that's why I'm here. In this guide to private and secure email services, I'm hoping to make it easier for you to decide which service to switch to based on features and functionalities they offer. Vetting process for all email providers to make it into this list includes the following features. Free basic entry for account creation, end-to-end -end encryption using asymmetric public key cryptography, public cause and activism, and anonymous sign-up. There exist other features in which providers listed here differ. Do they own their domain? Can you pay with cryptocurrency for premium plans? Do they have a mobile app? Do they support IMAP or POP for account exposed to use their emails on mail client like Mozilla Thunderbird? Can you sign in through Tor with an Onion link? What account verification do they require? How user friendly is their interface? What other features do they offer? I'm going to talk about these features in all four cases, but I'm not going to make any judgments about their email services. It's up to you to make your choice based on what you consider most important with your email provider. Asymmetric encryption is the one where users generate two keys to encrypt their data, a private key and a public key. When someone wants to contact you securely, they use your public key to encrypt the message. To read the message when you receive it, you decrypt it with your private key. Since public keys are available to everyone, your contacts need to make sure nobody try to spoof your identity using your public key to impersonate you and communicate with your contacts. To do that, you can encrypt the message using your contacts public key and then additionally sign the encrypted message with your private key. Your contact receives the message and then verifies your identity by pairing the signature encrypted by your private key with your public key available to them. In case of a match, your contact then proceeds to read the message you encrypted with their public key by decrypting it with their private key. You can either manage these keys yourself, which means each time you want to securely communicate with a new email account, you'll need to manually exchange public keys between one another. This gives you maximum security, because only you have the access to your private keys to unlock your messages. It's a slower and less convenient method but certainly more secure. If you want to sacrifice a little bit of security for significantly more convenience, you can turn to these email providers that offer various implementations of end-to-end -end encryption. The good news is that you don't need any technical knowledge. You don't even need to understand public key cryptography I tried to briefly explain before. The manipulation of your email account is the same as with Gmail. You'll still have a private account that only you can access and only you can read the messages from. The only trade-off is that private keys are copied to the provider servers to decrypt your messages messages when you log in. To maintain the end-to-end -end aspect of encryption, the private keys are locked by your password that these private email services cannot access. If you forget your password, only access to your account can be recovered, but all your messages will be discarded forever. If you made your password strong enough, even if the government requests access to your account, 
They won't be able to read your messages. They can't ask providers for password recovery because that will destroy the data. You have to trust these providers that they protect your keys properly. Fortunately, it's not entirely a blind faith. All of the email services listed in this video have published their source codes to make a global audit that reviews the authenticity and security of their webmail possible. The first private email we are going to look at is Tutanota. Tutanota is a free and open source email service based in Germany. The name stems from Latin and translates as secure message. The service offers intuitive, minimalistic and natural web design. It's only an email service so there is nothing else in your way. No external links, no advertisements, no flashy JavaScript. Tutanota lets you create your secure email anonymously. No personal information are required, no need for any contact details for verification. I signed up for Tutanota email through Tor and they still didn't require any verification. Just type your email, create a password and you are good to go. Well, not so quickly. Every email provider needs to have a good CAPTCHA verification to prevent spammers from flooding their servers. I really love that they didn't ask me to mark all pictures with storefronts, but I was a bit surprised when they asked me to read the clock, which was trivial to me and I did it on first try. When your account is created, you just type in your password one more time and you are logged in. But because I created such a great username, my account got flagged as spam and needed additional 48 hours for Titanota to verify it. I did try to create a second account with a more valid looking name to see if this is a bug or not and Tutanota created my account with no extra steps or getting caught in the spam filter. Overall, Tutanota user experience feels very nice and smooth. Intuitive, logical, nothing new to learn. This is exactly what a privacy email alternative should look like. The basic option is 1GB of free space that you can devote to your emails and contacts. Tutanota offers you a premium version and several options to purchase more space or aliases. You have to sacrifice some anonymity because as of making of this video, Tutanota doesn't accept bitcoins. Which is weird because they do have a bitcoin wallet if you just want to donate. As you can see the website is easy to navigate and requires pretty flat transitioning curve. There is also a mobile app for Android and iOS which is still in development. Tutanota doesn't allow you to export your public key so you won't be able to exchange encrypted messages with external users on your own. Also, there is no IMAP support so using mail clients is not going to be possible. However, Tutanoda is planning to add PGP support, two-factor authentication, encrypted calendar and encrypted cloud storage. It's possible to send encrypted messages via Tutanoda's application to external accounts. You first set up a contact and enter a password that your recipient needs to know before you send an encrypted message. As soon as you hit send, your contact will receive a notification email with a link that will direct them to a secure application of Tutanoda where they can read and reply to your messages confidentially with end-to-end -end encryption. This allows you to send encrypted messages to any email account, be it Gmail, Yahoo Mail or ProtonMail. Just make sure they know a correct password to decrypt the messages on their browser. Tutanota can be a trusted company as they don't make any revenue from advertising but rely solely on premium membership and donations. The security of their encryption is so hardcore that they are not even able to recover your password, which is something to keep in mind when transferring to this email provider. Next encrypted email service is provided by MailFence. This is another end-to-end -end encrypted email service, but unlike Tutanoda, MailFence supports OpenPGP so that you can manually exchange encryption keys independently from MailFence servers. This is of course an extra security step because you are in full control. But I leave it up to your judgment whether you want this much control or could bring yourself to trust a company with protection of your data. MailFence is based in Belgium, which generally offers stronger privacy customs than any of the five eyes countries. The website's interface is also simple and clean looking. Right in front, it asks you if you want to sign up for a secure and private email service. You can click the blue button, but if you click no, it will take you to Gmail sign-in page. Yeah, cryptographic nerds are brilliant trolls. Upon sign up, mail fans will require you to provide them with a verification email where your activation key will be sent. I prefer methods where you can create your email without the need to type with your other accounts. If someone wants an anonymous email account on MailFence, they would need to have some other anonymous email already created. Email is the only verification they need so they don't necessarily require you to fill in all your personal information. It's a privacy and not anonymity service after all. After you sign up and log in for the first time, 
you get to fill in some information about you and get to know your new mailbox. User interface of MailFan's webmail application looks a bit like from mid-2000s and not exactly as friendly as today's websites trying to attract the most brainless user base possible. MailFans puts you in full control of your encryption. You can generate your own keys directly in the settings of your mailbox or you can use a third party and upload them to MailFans. If you are new to email encryption, you can learn it by following MailFans's guide. It's not too complicated, just requires some extra steps from you to learn. MailFans is not just a private and secure email service, it also provides calendar and file storage where you can save your documents or encryption keys. Basic account will give you 200 megabytes in messages and additional 500 megabytes for documents. You can upgrade for 5 and 12 gigabyte plan with unlimited calendars and contacts or get a pro account with 30 gigs in messages and 24 gigs in documents for only a little over 8 bucks a month. The best thing is that you can pay with bitcoins, so if you set up your account with an anonymous email address, you can still remain anonymous by paying in cryptocurrency. Another option is this route. This company offers various services and webmail is just one out of many applications. As you can tell, this route is trying to go about their experience different way. It looks like they're trying to attract people who can't afford not to use encryption, like journalists, reporters, activists, political refugees, and so on. This route is one of the two services on the list that similarly to MailFans enables you to use third-party mail clients via POP or IMAP to store your messages locally. This route is encrypted with SSL and TLS to transfer your messages as envelope and not a postcard. Signing up is not difficult either. You don't even need to supply any additional account. There are security questions to secure your new address. I personally don't like this method because many answers to the security questions can be easily social engineered by reading your social media profiles. If they want to keep this method, I would suggest they allow you to make your own questions rather than use the most easily guessable answer to the question, what's your mother's maiden name? After my account was successfully created, it prompted me to a dashboard which kind of confused me because I wanted to see my mailbox and this wasn't it. Then I realized I have to use this route's main page and use the login button. Design of their webmail is by default actually very elegant and sleek. You have all the features this route provides you one click away. I'm also surprised that despite being fairly new, their interface is translated to so many foreign languages like actual mailbox and not just main website. Proton Mail should definitely take notes on this one. You are allowed to make some basic customization and create filters for your inbox. Themes are a nice feature to have that personal feel with your email, something I didn't see much with other private emails. For server-side encryption, this route uses GPG encryption, where you are not in control of your keys. If you want that extra security and are willing to trade some convenience, you can generate open PGP keys and manage your encryption manually on a desktop mail client. This route gives you access to a range of applications like calendar, file storage and other stuff, which I'm not going to get into because this is about mail security and privacy. You can check it out yourself and see how this route's offer balances against other secure email providers in this video. This route gives you option to enable second factor authentication, which is another great feature. You can view your activity, which can also be useful to observe any potential breaches. And calendar also looks very nice. Final offer on the list is Swiss-based encrypted email service made by ProtonMail. Developed by scientists from CERN and MIT, ProtonMail offers top security and privacy in their end-to-end -end encrypted webmail application. ProtonMail has simplicity without sacrificing security in their core, and they really do a good job. Setting up your email account cannot be any easier. Pick a username, create a password, avoid recovery mail option if you want to stay hidden. I use Tor to sign up for a ProtonMail account to see if they cheat me and require some personal identification, but I was not disappointed. There are several options to choose from, either email, SMS, donate or captcha. ProtonMail now takes bitcoins if you want to support their service and stay anonymous. But if you can't do that for some reason, captcha is also an option. A lot of captcha in this case. But you'll get there eventually and your account will be created in no time. Right off the bat, ProtonMail will greet you with 4 messages. This may be annoying to someone, but from my perspective, it gives me a nice first look at my new mailbox and I can actually start interacting with it while being guided with this ProtonMail tutorial. It boots up with vertical layout by default, but you can switch to horizontal with one click from your inbox without going to the settings tab. I think that's pretty neat. With 500 megabytes of inbox data for free, you are given tons of features. You can sort your mailbox with labels. In the settings menu, you can manage your ProtonMail subscription that notifies you about important information regarding their service and also tweak some other webmail actions. ProtonMail offers two-factor authentication, but you can also create a separate mailbox password. This way, when you want to sign in, you are going to have to enter your login password to access your account and then mailbox password to decrypt your messages. If you lose your mailbox password, you can still access your account, 
but your messages will be discarded. To upgrade from basic, there are several premium options as well as option to buy Proton VPN. While their VPN might have some credible merits, good security practice is to avoid having all eggs in one basket, a rule that so many sys admins ignore in today's times. Do with that information whatever you will. You can upgrade your storage, addresses, make a custom domain and get some extra features like filters, autoresponder and more. You can pay for all these nice things with bitcoins. There are other features and pros and cons to every private email I mentioned here. If I didn't get to some of them that you might think are important, tell us about them in the comments. This video aims to make a simple guide to the best private and secure email providers that internet citizens can switch to as alternatives to Gmail or Hotmail. I hope I helped you make a decision on which service to choose from. You can adjust your choice according to your needs. Even if you don't opt in for an NSA proof alternative where you manage your encryption keys independently from your provider, webmail public key encryption is good enough if your goal is to combat mass surveillance. When a provider offers end-to-end -end encryption, no government can just step in with a court order and request all user information. They would have to break in, make more steps, narrow down their collection to a smaller unit of targets, if not even just one, instead of dragging everything in bulk. In short, these private and secure email providers make government surveillance and bulk collection uneconomical, too expensive for an intelligence agency to break into. And that's our goal of the Privacy Advocates community. If you are looking for unbreakable communication, then webmail interface is not for you. In that case, you'll have to do more to remain secure. For general privacy and combat against mass surveillance and invasive advertisers, you can still kick them in their teeth with end-to-end -end encrypted email providers featured in this video. I hope you enjoyed this guide to secure and private emails and if you do, help me by engaging in the discussion and clicking the like button. If you leave a comment or like, my videos will rank better and will be discovered by more people spreading the message for better privacy on the internet even further. Thank you very much for watching and subscribe for more coverage of cyberspace and digital freedom in the future.